Hi, this is Ian Westerman. I'm the head pro at EssentialTennis.com, where it's my mission to bring passionate instruction to passionate tennis players all over the world, just like you. And in today's video lesson, we're gonna talk about tiebreaker success. And I wanna dedicate this video to Micah, who asked this question on Facebook. And he was wondering, just generally speaking, tiebreakers for some reason are something that kind of throws a lot of players out of their rhythm. It's a different format, and so a lot of players just generally feel uncomfortable and kind of out of sorts during a tiebreaker, which is unfortunate because it's, you know, it's kind of do or die time. Like, this is it. It's 6-6. Six, six. This is, you know, the little batch of points that we're going to use to determine who's going to come away winning this set or this match. And so it's crucial that you perform your best during those couple few points. So a few very, very general Suggestions here, Micah, on tiebreakers. First of all, and Micah, by the way, pointed this out when he asked his question, serves and returns are crucial. I would almost say especially in doubles, but you know, they're very important in both singles and doubles. And what you want to do here on the serve and return is just make sure that you have a very high percentage of success by picking smart targets. So when you are returning serve, and again, probably especially in doubles, but, but singles as well, make sure that you're picking out high percentage targets. You should be aiming cross courts or to the middle. If you're being challenged on a return of serve, if you're being you know, stretched way out, uh, the, there's nothing wrong with aiming for the middle. In fact, a lot of times it's just the smartest play if you're being put in a, in a tough spot. Cross court you know, is just kind of your standard high percentage safe target. On the other hand, as a server, again, we want to pick safe targets at the body or down the tee with a high, you know, as much spin as you can hit would be great uh, choices for a first serve. We want to avoid, again, probably especially on the double side, we want to avoid hitting second serves as much as possible because not only do we have that, do we have that added pressure of, you know, oh no, I don't want to blow this, this point on our second serve, but if we have that kind of uh, anxiety, it's much more likely that we're going to actually slow down, which not only increases our chances of missing the shot, but gives our opponent an opportunity. If they want to step up and try to come up with something big, it gives them that much more of a chance. They're not thinking that on first serve. Even if you end up just you know, hitting an aggressive spin serve, they're not looking nearly as much to step in, tee off, and really kind of come up with a winning shot. So your mental approach and your targeting approach on serves and returns is probably first and foremost, the most important thing. Now, a couple of mindset things, and th this is probably my biggest pet peeve for my students, is you do not want to try to be a hero in the tiebreaker. A lot of players have this mindset that, again, you know, and I totally understand, it's kind of do or die time, you, you need to come, a lot of players put pressure on themselves that I, I need to come up with something big now. Everybody's watching, these are the most important points, this is where, you know, I'm going to come away as either a chump or, a, or, you know, the hero. And they try to be that hero by doing the exact opposite of what I was just talking about. Uh, on serve, serve and a return, for example, they'll go for that low percentage down the line shot and aim for the line and just try to hit a winner right off the first shot. Or in doubles, they'll just they'll aim for that alley. Or they'll go for a second serve ace. Or they try to come up with that big, impressive shot you know, we, we all know that statistics say that more times than not we're gonna lose, we're gonna miss that shot, which really puts us behind the eight ball. You know, then typically the response is, oh no, I better, oh, I better be consistent now. They end up being tentative and just pushing the ball in play. And now we've totally given our opponent the opportunity to take the upper hand and, and win the match or win the set. So lose that hero mentality. What you wanna do instead is remember what got you to that point. I think a lot of players forget that, well, I must have done something right to get to 6-6 in the set, or one set all. So we're, we're playing the, you know, the match breaker, the super uh, tie breaker. You did something right to get to that point. Think back about what that is. Pull out kind of the more high percentage um, shot selections that you use to get to that point, and use that. Rather than thinking, well, it's a tie breaker. Now I better really come up with something special. And you start going for the low percentage shot selections. Use what got you there, especially high percentage shot selections. It doesn't mean that you're, you're playing uh, tentatively or you're playing weak. 
It just means that you're going to use smart shots. You're going to hit them confidently. You're going to go for those shots because it's what you've been successful with up until this point. So rather than think you have to come up with something completely different and you know, really impressive and big and you know, you got to like, crush your opponent on these points, think high percentage, think what got you there and you know, let, let the chips fall where they may. The worst thing you can do is beat yourself, okay? That's kind of the underlying thing here. Uh, going for low percentage shots, trying to be a hero. The worst thing you can do is beat yourself. Uh, your opponent does nothing really at all, special or otherwise, to win the tiebreaker, and you just hand over the set to them. That's, that's the worst way to go out. So, Michael, hopefully this has been helpful to you, and uh, if you've been watching today, hopefully it's been helpful to you as well. If so, please do me a favor and click like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Essential Tennis YouTube channel so you don't miss out on lots and lots of great instruction just like this that's coming out in the very near future. And lastly, if you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave those uh, down below. Uh, I personally read all of them and uh, I reply to as many as I can. And with that, thank you for watching. Take care and good luck with your tennis.